What would you say is more important, inches or pounds? Keen, what do you think is more important, inches or pounds? I'll take your silence to mean inches. There you have it. Hey, what's shaking, bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. I really appreciate tuning into this video. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. There's a lot of people out there who get a lot of success with weight loss doing carnivore. Simple carnivore. Eat meat till you're satiated. Eat again when you're hungry. Repeat. It works for the vast majority of carnivores. There are some people out there who get really discouraged that the scale isn't budging or sometimes the scale is going backwards and it's kind of confusing for people because they're like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be losing weight doing this. Well, not if you've got a long history of metabolism damage. Not if you have a long history of metabolism damage. You have a lot of healing to do. And if you've been restricting calories for a long time or you've been yo-yo dieting, you have a big history of that, there's a good chance your body is getting refueled. I would trust the process at that point. Stick to what the long-term carnivores recommend and just trust the process. Have a lot of high fat meat and just trust the fact that your body is healing. You might be putting on bone density and lean mass. If you weren't getting enough protein for a lot of years and you have somewhat of an active lifestyle or you've conditioned your body to just not take in calories and therefore a little bit of calories goes a long way, I think you have some metabolism healing to do. So I have that same problem myself. So I hit a wall with carnivore and I've lost over 150 pounds, but this wall has made it difficult for the scale to move. But I don't care that much because as important it is that the scale moves, there's way more important things to pay attention to. The scale is only one piece of the pie. And I have my little man here, Canine the Destroyer, to help guide us through this. Canine seems to be going through a little bit of an episode right now. He's a pretty nervous dog. He's a rescue from the Dominican. And the neighbors have been making a little bit of noise, nothing too bad at all, but it's enough that it really freaks him out. So he's gonna be joining us for this video. So at one point, he may get comfortable and just leave on his own. So if he's just not here, don't worry, nothing happened to him. He just felt brave and decided to carry on with his day. So there's a lot of other things to pay attention to when you're trying to lose weight. The scale is one piece of the pie. It's just one piece. We got to keep that piece in perspective because those numbers can actually do us harm if they go in the wrong direction. And you're thinking, yeah, I don't want the scale to go up. Well, that's all well and good, but you also might not want the scale to go down. And we're going to get into that later on in the video. I'm going to give some reasons why we shouldn't just pay attention to the scale. And we're going to talk about the other things we need to pay attention to. And when you take all those other things into account, you're going to notice the scale is one small piece of the pie. Here's the big reason why you don't want to just pay attention to the scale. If that's all you're going by, if it's telling you you're putting on weight, you might be putting on lean mass and bone density. Is that a bad thing? No, because you just raised your metabolism. So you're correcting your metabolic rate. You're giving yourself a reason to burn more calories in a day. Now, if you're losing weight, you could be losing lean mass. Lean mass is both muscle and bone density. So as an example, well, the last time I checked, my lean mass was down 10 pounds. My lean mass went from 190 to 180 pounds. So my resting metabolic rate dropped 100 calories in a day that it burns. So my metabolism actually slowed down with that weight loss. That was a really bad number. We want that number to be all fat. We don't want it to be lean mass. So if you're just going by the scale and that's all you're going by and you're getting discouraged that that number is not going in the direction you want it to, you could actually be giving yourself negative reinforcement for a positive thing. Think about that. If you do something positive and you're getting rewarded for it and you know it's a positive act, you're getting rewarded for it, well, that's a good thing. But imagine doing something good for yourself and you convince yourself it's a bad thing. Well, now you're getting a negative reinforcement for doing something positive. The scale went up and you're upset about it. Well, you don't know if that was lean mass or fat that you put on. So you're jumping to a conclusion that it's just fat. You're now getting upset that the scale went up and you've put on weight and it's really discouraging to you. And it encourages you to not continue with what you're doing or try and course correct and maybe cause some harm when actually it might be doing you some good. So you don't want to jump to conclusions when you're just using the scale. In the spring, I put on 23 pounds and I didn't know I put on 23 pounds. So my waistline had gone down half an inch and I went to the scale to see like, oh, I wonder how much weight I lost because I wanted to include that as one piece of the puzzle in my weight loss. And I looked and I was up 23 pounds, but my waistline was down half an inch. How is that possible? So some people would be really discouraged by that number. 
I wasn't. I knew the fat was going to melt away eventually, so I wasn't too worried about that. You got to look at the big picture, not the day-to-day -day little picture. You can start to obsess about the wrong numbers and create a negative reinforcement. Weighing yourself every day is definitely not a good idea. I know if I have chicken wings and I have it with a lot of salt or seasoning, I'm going to retain water for a few days after that. So that scale is not going to be an accurate representation of my weight. You can't get obsessed with a scale. You have to be looking at these other things. And one of the best things to look at is inches. We're going to get into that in a minute. What I want to stress now is that we could be reinforcing a negative mindset. And most of us probably are. If you only find the scale encouraging when it goes with the numbers that you want, that's not a good thing. You should always find the scale encouraging, even if it's going in the wrong direction, because it's something you can learn from. There's a reason why that happened and you need to stop, analyze it, try break it down, try and look at what you did that made the numbers go in that direction. Could have been something you ate. It could have been your lifestyle. There's all sorts of possibilities it could have been, and that can help you to get more in tune with your diet and day-to-day -day lifestyle. What if this has nothing to do with your daily food intake? What if this is all about your hormones? If you have an insulin problem, that has almost nothing to do with the amount of food you're getting in a day, does it? Not really. You can manage that insulin problem with food, but what if you have a thyroid problem? I have a thyroid problem. I can have stubborn weight loss when it comes to my hypothyroidism, and I can't afford to get my thyroid tested every day. If your hormones are part of the problem, you got to stop putting as much focus on food intake and calories as you have been, and with a scale saying, and start focusing on the numbers you get when you get your hormones tested. So how's your blood sugar? How's your insulin levels? We all know that when it's fasting. What about when you're not fasted? Maybe go out and get a keto mojo so you can test your blood sugar against your ketones, and that will give you an indication of how your insulin is doing. You can go out and buy an insulin reader. Go to your doctor and get more tests done. You know, you can't afford to worry about the scale and all your calories if your hormones are way out. Get those in balance and then start worrying about the other things. Get those in balance as best as you can before you start obsessing over these other numbers like the scale. The scale's not even giving an accurate representation of how your metabolism is doing. All these other things are. So I want you to start paying attention to these other things and refer back to this video whenever the scale's not giving you the numbers you want. Doing a carnivore diet is most likely going to give you the numbers on the scale that you're looking for. You might hit plateaus or it might not give you the numbers you want in the beginning. Some people put on weight in the beginning of carnivore. That could be your metabolism healing. Trust the process. Trust the system. If after six months or a few months those numbers aren't getting better, maybe go to some carnivore groups on Facebook and ask them what's happening. Maybe it's time you look into getting a coach. Maybe it's time you look into getting someone who can help guide you through this, who's been through this. Find a coach that resonates with you. Find a coach who's been through something like this. Find a coach who has experience. There's a lot of good coaches out there. Mine's Kelly Hogan. The problems she had resonate with me. They're a lot of the same problems I have. You're never going to find someone with all the same problems you have, but she's gone through the same struggles. And I tend to have the same mentality in relationship with food that she always has. So I really resonated with Kelly Hogan when I started learning more and more about carnivore. So this is the part in the video I want you to pay attention to the next time you go on the scale and you get discouraged by the numbers. If you put on weight and your energy level's good, well, <laughs> Wouldn't you call that a gain? You're not getting tired through the day. You have even energy all through the day. How do you feel physically? Do you find running up a flight of stairs is easier than it used to be? Do you feel your joints don't feel as inflamed as they used to? There's lots of different ways to measure your success. Canine, are you getting ready to jump off my legs finally? Go on. Good boy, canine. What if a month goes by and the scale's gone up five pounds or it hasn't budged, but you've dropped a size? How's your sleep doing? Do you find you're getting into a deeper sleep? Do you find you're more well rested in the morning? Do you find you're not waking up as often at night? Some things to pay attention to. How are your medical scans, exams, or blood tests? Are those numbers getting better? If all those numbers are getting better, then you're laughing. I've always said this about carnivore. In the beginning of carnivore, most of my health problems get managed extremely well within the first month or two. It's one of these ways of eating that's opposite of any other weight loss I've ever done. When I eat a carnivore diet, right in the beginning, my health problems get managed in the first month or two. And over time, the weight loss starts to get better and better. Now, normally when you start losing weight, your medical exams start to get better the more weight you lose. Well, this has been going opposite for lots of people that do carnivore. All your pathologies start going into remission early on before you even have any real significant weight loss. And there's another thing, as I talked about earlier, we can check. What's your blood sugar? You can go out and get a blood sugar monitor. You can go out and get a 24-hour blood glucose monitor, or you can just get something that can prick your finger and you can check out your daily blood sugar readings. Those are important numbers to pay attention to. It's not abnormal to have your blood sugar go high after you eat. That's actually quite normal. What you want is you want it to go 
down within a short window of time after you eat, within an hour or two, you want to be doing pretty good again with your blood sugar numbers. We want to make sure that your blood sugar is responding well to the food you're taking in. How's your blood pressure? Have you been doing carnivore for a month and the scales stay the same or gone up? But when you get your blood pressure checked, it's much better. What's more important, the scale or the fact that your blood pressure is down? When you have high blood pressure, that's causing a lot of friction on the inside of your arterial walls. We want to minimize that. We want to lower that blood pressure so that that blood that's getting pumped through your arteries isn't going to be damaging the inside of your artery walls. We want to minimize that damage so that when you do exercise, you're going to have normal high blood pressure, not ridiculously high blood pressure. For me, the carnivore diet fixes that within weeks. How's your waistline? I think this is the most important number to pay attention to. Stop paying attention to the scale and start paying attention to your waistline. What if both are going up? That's possible. But what if you're putting on lean mass while that's going up? Well, maybe that's not so bad, is it? Because now your resting metabolic rate is going to be better. And eventually, when your metabolism gets higher, you're going to lose that fat. We want to have a higher lean mass and lower body fat percentage. There's going to be an adjustment period for some people who have pretty strict, severe metabolic damage. And we want to make sure that we are taking that into account and not getting discouraged in the beginning when the numbers aren't going our way. You have a lot of healing to do. It took you years to get to this point. Give it some time. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying ignore the scale. I'm saying weigh the scale against all those other things I mentioned. The scale can be an important piece of the puzzle, but more when you're in a maintenance level, not as you're losing weight, because it's not an accurate representation of the kind of weight that you're losing. When I lost almost 20 pounds in the last couple months, over 50% of that was lean mass. That is not good. Looks great on the scale, but I literally damaged my metabolism doing that. How is that good? But if you're only going by the scale, you might look at that number and go, oh, you lost 20 pounds. Good for you. Yeah, but you know what? My shoulders went in. I lost lean mass. My shoulders just got really thin. I could see the difference in how I looked. So I can't stress this enough. Inches, not pounds. Pay more attention to all the non-scale victories you're going through. Stop putting all your faith in the scale. It's not even an accurate representation of the benefits of your weight loss. Just keep in mind, you could be reinforcing a negative mindset, getting negative results on a carnivore diet because you lost lean mass, but because the scale went down, you think that's a good thing because the scale went down and now you're happy you lost weight. But meanwhile, you just damaged your metabolism. You gotta watch for this. Pay attention to the big picture. Don't focus so much on the scale. Do you wanna know a little non-scale victory I have? I can see muscle definition a little bit more in my forearms. I can see some veins popping through that just weren't present there a few months ago, even though I haven't lost a lot of weight. That's a non-scale victory. I get to see that almost every single day. It's something that I can pay attention to that's like, yeah, I'm on the right track. I know I'm going in the right direction with this. During my eight month weight plateau, I still lost inches on my waist. That's a victory. Look at the big picture. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Like I said before, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Take care.